Well, this should be a shock to nobody. It's been reported that our knockouts champion Trinity is likely heading back to the WWE. And this has been, um, apparently the sources have been within Impact Wrestling as well. Or within TNA, I'm sorry. It is 2024 now, right? So, uh, the, you know, this shouldn't come as a shock to anybody. You know, this is something that I personally always expected to be the case. So when I say that, you know, Trinity is not one of those people who chose Impact, you know, over AEW, um, I think she did, you know, to me, she went in and found a short-term deal because her ultimate goal was to go back there. It makes sense. Her husband's there. She probably didn't want to leave there to begin with. You know, I think when her and Mercedes left, they expected to be begged to come back. And, um, you know, I think people missed Mercedes and Trinity kind of fell under the radar. But then, you know, she has come over and become knockouts champion and done a tremendous job. You know, I've never found her her ring work, worm, ring worm, wow, ring work to be crisp. Um, but, she's, but she's done a good job. She's been a good ambassador for the company. And this is the one of the cases where I would say, you know, don't. Don't give the situation too hard of a time because she did not appear to me like she just came in for a paycheck and bounced like some people will do. Um, as I said, she was a good ambassador. She promoted the company well, and she she moved the needle a little too, which is pretty hard to do in today's, today's landscape. Now, initially, she didn't. Uh, the first month or so was not... Uh, was not great, but I do believe the social media numbers for her were good. And I, I thought her overall debut was a little shaky. The episode looked horrible, uh, lighting wise, and obviously with her much darker complexion, she you know she just looked like a set of clothes floating out there. And I just don't think it. Um, I don't think on TV it, it came off very good. The social media stuff real, real well. I don't even know if it was by impact. It might have been fans for the most part, you know, recording it, recording her entrance. And and that, that really got a lot of press. And they did a good a lot. I mean, not a lot of press, but a lot of uh, eyeballs on social media. And they did a good job teasing it. And then, you know, eventually they announced her. So I don't have too too big of an issue. I just never expected her to be around. I've been saying since almost the beginning, Trinity will lose once for Scott Demore. Oh no, BQ. You're so negative, so pessimistic. She's going to be part of the knockouts forever. Uh, we know that, that re realists know that that was never going to be the case. And uh, yeah, I've been, I've been saying she's going to lose once. You know, she ran through the knockouts roster. She may lose a second time if they give her a rematch, but I don't think that they will. Um, but with with her damn near confirmed departure, that lets us know she's likely dropping the title and that uh, the chances of Mercedes are are slimmer and slimmer, which I never really thought was a, a possibility, but I thought she could come in and do a match, a match or two. You know, I, I brought up Mickey James in the past. But I, I do have to ask a question. I'm curious some of your answers on this. And this was something that kind of crossed my mind the other day. If the knockouts division is supposed to, you know, those at TNA are going to let you know and the fans are going to let you know this is the best women's division in the world. If the knockouts division is the best division in the world, why do outsiders come in and beat them like a drum? You know, Trinity, the inspiration. And there's been others that, you know, they don't usually bring in knockouts for, you know, one-offs and shit like they do might do with the men. I say one-offs, you know, a taping. They don't typically do that. You know, they're at least around for a little bit. But if you're coming from like WWE or something like where you're trying to say, hey, we're superior to that division, they they come and run it. You know, happens with the X division. Same thing. Hey, we got, you know, the best cruiserweights in the world. And then you you bring in people from other places and they beat them. Tag team, all that stuff. You know what I mean? So I would I would love to see them 
you know, really further cement these divisions and say, hey, outsiders aren't going to come in and just just beat our people. Um, you know, Trinity ran through the entire roster. Uh, she ran through Deanna like three times. I think she might have tapped her out two out of the three, maybe three out of the three. But I, I think it was two out of the three. Like, what did that ultimately do when she's getting ready to leave? You know, the, the, there were some matches that I just felt were unnecessary. Like she wrestled Giselle Shaw like nine times. I'm exaggerating, of course, but, you know, she definitely ran through the division, but she did come off like a, a pretty big star on TV. And I think that, um, you know, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal that she's leaving. It just means they have some funds to allocate to somebody else. And, you know, it, there's nothing wrong with a fresh knockouts division every once in a while. I don't, that doesn't mean bring someone in new, put the title on them right away. But I mean, it's fresh. We, it's not the biggest division within the company. So we kind of want some fresh people to cycle in and out a little bit. Otherwise it'll get really, really bland. Like it kind of was during the, uh, the early days of the pandemic where it was just the same, uh, eight to 10 girls having the same matches. And it was awful. The knockouts division was in a really bad place. And then they, you know, they started freshening it up from there. So, but yeah, Trinity, uh, Probably not going to see her any further, and she's probably going to drop that title to Jordan Grace at Hard to Kill.